Good morning. Welcome to worship. We are glad you are joining us today as we praise God together. Pastor Michael has been on vacation this past week and will be completing that tomorrow and returning and he'll be in the office on Tuesday and thereafter. Today is Scout Sunday. We appreciate the uh, hospitality of our scout group that has hosted the coffee fellowship between services today. Might be a few snacks left after the service if you'd like to enjoy that as well. We thank their leaders, Bill and Jer, uh, who uh, lead the troop 405, which is sponsored here at First Lutheran. They meet on Mondays at 6 p.m. So if others are interested, contact them. They'll gladly welcome you or explain the scouting program. April, uh, February is full of all kinds of different activities, and one of them will be a karaoke party on February the 9th. That's being hosted by our Masterpiece Ministry, and they invite anyone who'd like to grab the mic and, and let loose and have a good time to come and join them on the 9th from 5 until 7. And then um, Mardi Gras is the Sunday before Lent begins. That'll be February 26th. You know, that's always a, a special worship with a brass uh, ensemble and such to uh, raise up the Mardi Gras theme. And following that will be the chili cook-off. So if you've got a favorite chili recipe you want to enter, you can do that. Or maybe you just want to come and taste and, and vote on the chili you think is the best. That'll happen on February the 26th. Uh, Lent it begins on the 22nd, and there'll be services throughout the Lent and season on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. and again at 7 p.m. The evening one will have meals prior to that. And on Ash Wednesday, it'll be a fish fry from 5.30 to 7 p.m. So note the information in the bulletin, and also note you need to make reservations ahead of time for that, so it might be pre-ordered. So make note of those, and Take part in those of that interest to you. There is a wonderful sofa placed here by the Bee Gees this morning. They did it in, uh, for their friend Jack Kaislea because he always complains how hard these pews are. So they wanted to offer him an alternative. It's vacant. If anyone wants to come in and lounge and sleep or whatever, it's uh, there uh, uh, to come forward, especially during the sermon time, and rest and close your eyes and let the rest go away. But... Uh, but anyway, it's the Bee Gees having fun with Jack today. I invite you to stand. Oh, wait, before that, we have a whole group of people here, and they're here for a special event as we celebrate the baptism and second birth of Kinley Mae Johnson. She'll be brought to the font and through the waters become a part of the family of God, and we'll be celebrating that later in this service. I invite you to stand as we turn to the Kyrie printed in your bulletin. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with you. We sing together 815.
The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Let us pray. Lord God, with endless mercy, you receive the prayers of all who call upon you. By your spirit, show us the things we ought to do and give us the grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated as Jer reads the word. The first reading is from the 58th chapter of the book of Isaiah, starting with the first verse. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me, righteous judgments. They delight to draw near God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. In such, the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself, is, it, is, is to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes. Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to lose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourselves from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. Word of God, word of life. 
Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the second chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians, starting with verse 1. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on power of God. Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish, but we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understand this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be to God. Now in the second and third verse, I'd love to invite some clapping and raise the roof. Here we go. According to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. One, no one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the, a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, Until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. One more time, giving glory to our Father in heaven. bad for a bunch of Lutherans. <laughs> anyway, you may be seated. Grace to you and peace this day from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. With such simple words and earthly images, Jesus tells us who we are and what our place and purpose in the world really is. We are salt. We are light. Doesn't sound like much, does it? I mean, to be considered such common, ordinary, everyday things, like a tiny pinch of salt, like a, a flicker of light, might not do much for our egos. I mean, after all, how much time have you spent pondering the marvels of salt in your life lately? Lost any sleep over it? I doubt it. Unless you're on a, a low salt or a salt-free diet, you probably just reach for that shaker without even giving it a thought, maybe even before you've taken the first bite of that food to see if it really even needs more salt. And light? Ours is a, a well-lit world. A quick flick of the switch, and we have instant illumination. Outside, the lights come on automatically at dusk and shine until the morning light takes over. We've grown accustomed to having our way well-lit, and we hardly even give it a second thought. Besides, wherever we are, you know, all you have to do is take out that, that cell phone and open the flashlight and banish the darkness. So to be salt or light, such common taken-for-granted elements in the world doesn't seem like really much of an honor. But then Jesus was always, to, always one to call things as he saw them. And to be his follower wasn't to find ourselves in some honored places or, or with special privileges. Indeed, to be his follower is to recognize the fact we're simply salt. We are light. We are common, ordinary, everyday people living out common, ordinary, everyday lives for the most part without much fanfare or notice. But then Jesus would also remind us that salt and light are not ends in and of themselves. They do not exist for their own sake. They have a purpose. And that purpose is to give themselves away for the benefit of something else. You see, salt has no value until it's sprinkled over some food. And then it will add zest. It brings out the flavor. It will enhance the egg, the steak, the popcorn, and make them their best. In a sense, it makes food alive. And it does so quietly, silently, secretly, allowing the food's full flavor to come through without drawing much attention to itself. Jesus says, you, you are the salt of the earth. He reminds us that as his faithful people, we bring out a different flavor to life. Oh, it might not be immediately apparent to those around us, 
Our faith may not be as evident as the faith of a Billy Graham or, or a Mother Teresa, but the Lord says, don't be fooled. You do make a difference, for you exist for a purpose. The author, Robert Fulgham, put it this way. He said, every person passing through this life unknowingly leaves something behind and takes something. Most of this something cannot be seen or heard or numbered, and yet nothing counts without it. Without realizing it, we fill important places in each other's lives. Good people who are always there, who can be relied upon in small, important ways. People who teach us, bless us, encourage us, support us, uplift us in, in the dailiness of life. And of course, we fill that role ourselves. There are those who, who depend upon us, watch us, learn from us, take from us, and we never know. So don't sell yourself short. You may never have proof of your importance, but you are more important than you know. Oh, to be salt doesn't sound like very much, hardly noticed, unless it's not there. So too for us. We go about our daily lives. We just quietly do our jobs. We lovingly provide for our families. We dedicatedly serve at, at church or school or out in the community without fanfare, and our efforts hardly seem noticed. But then, isn't that how it always is? Often it isn't until we're all grown up, away from home and on our own, that we come and appreciate the concern and the influence that others have had upon us. It can be years later, long after we graduated from high school, that we come to appreciate the care and the discipline of our parents, the guidance of a particular teacher, the influence of a special coach or scout leader or music instructor. They were salt present, there for us, but in quiet, taken-for-granted ways. We may never have told them, and yet what a difference they, they made without even realizing it. And now that same kind, with that same kind of faith, we're called to do the same thing in the world, to be salt, active, present, working to bring a new flavor into human lives. But we're also called to be more than that. Jesus goes on to say, you are the light of the world. Now, while salt works quietly, silently, with, almost in secret, without drawing attention to itself, light, on the other hand, is, is meant to be noticed. Jesus said no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a bushel. No, it's meant to work openly and publicly, bearing witness to the one who is the light of all. And we do that, you and I. Each time we live out our faith boldly, sometimes it's just as simple as, as coming to worship and our neighbors take notice. Maybe it's taking part in a Bible class. We do that when we let it be known our priorities that, that God comes first so that all the other activities might fall into proper perspective. We do that when we refuse to laugh at a derogatory joke at the expense of another race or gender. We do that when we get voice to the issues of, of peace and justice, to the issues of human rights and human life. We are light in a dark world when we reflect the one who is truly light of all. Now, our light may not appear very overwhelming. What's important, you see, isn't the amount of light we have, but just letting our light shine through whatever amount we do have. Even a soft light will be effective. Indeed, too much light can sometimes be blinding, while a little light is sufficient to give sight. 
I think of my grandmother on this particular weekend. Yesterday was her birthday, and she was just a week short of turning 90 when she died. So she was a part of my life for a very long time. And she was definitely the salt of the earth kind, and she never hid her light either. It reflected the one in whom she believed. And in her gentle witnessing light, I came to understand what was important in her life. And that helped set the direction for my own life and a big factor why I stand here before you today. Well, I once read an article that made my grandmother's light glimmer again in my heart. It's entitled, Grandma's Spectacles. And it goes like this. A little boy said to a playmate, when I get older, I want to wear spectacles just like grandma wears. She must have a special kind because she sees so much more than most people. She can see when people are hungry or tired or sorry. And she can even see what will make them feel better. She can see how to fix a, a lot of things to have fun with. And she can see when a feller is about to cry. And she can see what to do to make him feel better. I asked her one day how she could see so good. And she said it was the way she learned to look at things as she got older. So when I get older, I want a pair of spectacles, just like grandma's, so I can see good too. Oh, you got to know, it wasn't her spectacles that made grandma look so good or see so well. It was the light, the one who lit her past that in quiet ways she could bring a distinctive loving flavor to life. And her open ways let his love glow in and through her. So Jesus says to us, to each and every one of us today, be what you are. Salt, to quietly add some flavor to life. Be what you are, light so that others might come to see good, too, even in their darkest days, and then always give glory to their Father in heaven. Amen. We sing together, the hymn is 593.
I'll now invite Kinley May, her parents and godparents, to please join me around the font, bring that order of baptism with you as Kinley's drawn to the light of God. And to the congregation, I'll invite you to turn to page 227 in the front portion of the Red Book. The numbers are at the bottom of the page where you'll find the order for holy baptism. 227. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Hi. <laughs> She's studying me closely. I'll just put a little water on you in a little bit, okay? God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. So I'll call upon the godparents to present our candidate. Uh, we present Kinley May for baptism. Called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, do you, her parents, desire to have your daughter Kinley baptized into Christ? We do. So as you bring Kinley May to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with these responsibilities, to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the, the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and provide, nurture her in faith and prayer so that Kinley May may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Kinley May grow in Christian faith and love? If so, respond, I do. I do. I do. God, parents, do you promise to nurture Kinley May in Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to live, help her live in the covenant of baptism and communion with the church? And people of God out there, do you promise to support Kinley and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, answer, we do. And now we come to the portion in our uh, sacrament of baptism that in the ancient church was considered a mini exorcism as people would face the rear of the church and say no to the devil three times and then facing the altar proclaim their faith in, in God in, in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so we'll do this together. I ask you to profess the, your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of sin that rebel against God? Amen. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Amen. I'll invite you to stand as together we proclaim our faith. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church, the the Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And so we remember all the ways God used water for, uh, throughout the uh, history of, of the scriptures and reminding us of God's promise of life and, and cleansing. You may be seated as we have the prayer. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. 
And through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that kindly may, washed in the waters of baptism, may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now I'll ask that she be held over the font. And for the church record, how shall she be named? Kinley May Johnson. <laughs> I know, it's a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> Kinley May Johnson, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That doesn't show the half right Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Kinley May with the gift of your Holy Spirit the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. And now, can we meet? Child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And then from... The large candle, what we call the Christ candle, is the Christ, the light of the world. We light this smaller candle, symbolizing that now the God, Christ is with you and his light will shine in and through you. And we say, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. And together, let us welcome Kinley into the family. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's created and redeeming word to all the world. May I take her for a little walk down the aisle? Yeah, sure. Okay, you want to go? Hi. <laughs> After all, we're all Johnsons. So. <laughs> <laughs> there they are. This is your newest sister in Christ, Kinley Mae Johnson. And you can give her a round of welcome. We even get them all the way back here, right? The ones that are hiding out from you. Here they are. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> It's okay, I gave your baby away. <laughs> okay. You may blow out the candle. You may blow out the candle. And uh, we'll sign the certificate and I have some gifts for you after the service, okay? So thank you. You may return to your places. You're welcome. Pardon? Oh, yeah, I, I'm going to give them afterwards. I told them I'll do that. But thank you. <clears throat> I'll invite you to stand as we enter into prayer. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious Lord, you said we are the salt of the earth. Grant that we might live according to that call. Where life is seen as dull and boring, may we bring flavor and excitement and meaning through God's message of love. Merciful God, 
receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Where there is sadness and despair, may we bring the joy of Jesus as he shines in and through us and our acts of faith and deeds of goodness. Let his grace add a distinct flavor that gives zest to life. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, you said we are the light of the world. Where darkness reigns, may we bring the light of Christ's love that wipes away all fear. Be with victims of war and violence, refugees who have no place to go, that they might not be left in the darkness of the world, but see light in the actions of nations who share in their plight and would work to give them hope. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Where people are caught in habits that destroy, may we enlighten them with the message that Christ brings wholeness. Give power to those who feel powerless over forces greater than themselves, that they might experience a freedom to live lives set free from addiction. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Especially, Lord, let us be salt and light to those who need healing and balm. Be with the family of Alice Johnson in their sorrow and give them comfort. Surround the sick and recuperating with your care. Especially we lift Arlene Schluter, Ted Norder, Raleigh McClellan, Kathy Schulte, Pat Homan, Jerry and Doris Rail, and Ann Thomas's daughter Megan, and all who experience illness and discomfort, that they might know your gift of wholeness. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. On this Scout Sunday, bless the work of scouting in this place and around the world, that through its efforts, the young may, like our Lord, increase in wisdom and stature and in favor with you and all people. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. And be with Kinley Mae Johnson, claimed as your own through the waters of baptism. Grant her light to always shine brightly, that others might see and give glory to her heavenly Father. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting in your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And, and also, also with, with you. And I'll invite you to turn and share that peace with one another. You may be seated. And as always, we want to thank you for continued support to the work in the ministry of, of First Lutheran Church. Your gifts are, are truly appreciated. And if you brought a gift you'd like to leave at the offering place at the door, you are welcome to do so today or send them in or uh, give electronically. So every gift uh, enhances and, and strengthens the ministries of First Lutheran Church. Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as the people of justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, for in deep wisdom you guide us by the way of the cross into life.
Holy God, you are the life and light of all. By your powerful word, you created all things, and you spoke to us through the prophets. Your word took flesh in Jesus, shining, shining your light into, into our, our darkness, darkness making, making visible your mercy, mercy and love. love. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, and then he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. Take and eat. This, this is, is my body, which is for you. For you. Do, Do this to remember in remembrance me. of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This, this cup, cup is my blood, blood for it out for you and all people, people for the forgiveness of sins. sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, Jesus' own example in his promise of life, we await the day when the whole universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. Bless all of us by your spirit, that fed and nourished by this meal, we may become the light of Christ for the world. Amen. Join together, we pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We'll invite all who wish to receive to come down the center aisle to receive the uh, bread, or there are gluten-free wafers available for those who prefer. Then move uh, to left or right to receive uh, wine or grape juice. And as you depart, there are tables with baskets for your empty glasses. Uh, this meal is open to all who wish to receive. All are welcome, welcome at this table. table. Come and taste the joy of God. Thank you. 
Please stand. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Amen. Go into the world, be salt, be light, be what God has proclaimed you, knowing that God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uplift you today and always. Amen. Amen. We sing 843.